Hi, I'm Christine. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you've never been here before. If you're new around here, I'd love it if you subscribed and stuck around or if you let me know in the comments how you found my channel, I'd love to know. And today I'm here to kick off another round of the Historical Romance Readathon. So the Historical Romance Readathon is always put on by Jess from Peace Love Books, Lacey from Lacey Book Lovers, and Lisa from Remarkably Lisa. They actually started this readathon back in like 2020, early 2020, I want to say. I've participated in every round. I believe there's been six of them. They have multiple times a year. Sometimes it's during the holidays, sometimes it's during the summer, the spring, and now this one we have in the fall. Historical romances are actually my favorite subgenre of romance and so you know I don't really need an excuse to pick these up but it's always fun to do for a readathon. So this round of the readathon is taking place from October 20th through the 22nd. I'm actually going to be starting early on the night of October 19th just because I have lots of books on this TBR that I want to get to. I do have nine books on my TBR. We'll see if I get to all of them. I'm not sure because I do have a busy weekend planned but you know I always want to get to all the books so we'll see. So first up is the group pick which is Yours Until Dawn by Teresa Medeiros. I'm very excited to get to this one. This is the gorgeous this orange cover and then that step back moment there. I've read about four or five Teresa Medeiros books now and all of them I really have a great time with and every time I read one I'm like oh yeah I want to read more of hers like I love her stuff and so I was really excited when they picked this for the readathon group pick. This one all I know is it's a Beauty and the Beast retelling and I'm excited to get to it. Next up is the Historical Hellions Book Club pick for October, which is Rebellion by Nora Roberts. I'm very excited to get to this one. This one's actually pretty short. I think it's just under 300 pages. This will actually be my first time reading Nora Roberts, so I'm a little wary going in. I don't know what to expect. Obviously, no, she is a creative writing genius. She pumps out so many books. She has so many books out. I think she's hilarious as a person, like things that I've seen her interact with people online. But like her backlist is just so intimidating, so I never really knew where to start or if I would like her books. <laughs> so I am excited to check this one out. All I know is that it is a historical romance and set in the Scottish Highlands and so we will see how it is. And then next I decided to use the readathon to get through some of Beverly Jenkins backlist. These are the last few I have to get through for her to be caught up on her entire backlist. So first up is Winds of the Storm. This is the second book in her Levesque family series. This one I believe the heroine is a spy and the hero needs to find her and get her help. She actually saved his life in the past as well. So the third book in the Levesque family series is Captured. I love this one. I love the ship on the front and the couple. I actually really love on the back how we get the entire scene there. Hopefully that shows. In this one, I know the hero is a captain and he ends up taking over another ship. And when he gets there, the heroine has been enslaved on the ship there. And so he kind of wants to make her like his mistress or something like that. So that is this one. Next up is Jewel. This is actually the second book in her Grayson family series, which takes place in Grayson Grove, Michigan. And it is the book that follows Vivid, which is one of my all time favorite Beverly Jenkins reads. So in this one I know it's a fake relationship. The hero and heroine are friends and then she has to pose as like his fake wife. The town finds out and so they have to kind of make it into a marriage of convenience so her reputation isn't ruined. I'm excited to get to this one. And then next is Wild Sweet Love. I love this cover. In this one I know the heroine is an outlaw and she's trying to get away from her like past of train robbing. I know her brother has had a book as well which I really enjoyed. Beverly Jenkins always writes such badass strong heroines and so I'm really excited to see this one who is an outlaw. And then the last book from Beverly Jenkins on my TBR is Before the Dawn. Love this cover as well. And in this one, I know that the heroine married a man on his deathbed who was actually in love with her mother. And he just wanted to help her out and kind of, you know, give her his money and his name once he passed. And then on his deathbed as well, he actually tells the heroine that he has these long lost sons that he left behind in Colorado. And he wanted the heroine to go and find them. So the heroine goes and tracks down her late husband's sons who actually ends up one of them being the hero and it is their romance. We'll see how this goes. I'm definitely guessing it's going to be a hate to love situation. <laughs> the next up I have Nobody's Duke by Scarlett Scott. I think this is actually on my TBR because in the previous round of the historical romance readathon in the spring I believe that Rachel from Rachel Reads and Sings read this one and she really enjoyed it and she compared it to Again the Magic by Lisa Kleypas which is one of my all-time faves. So I've been wanting to get to this one and check it out. I don't think I've read anything by this author so we'll see how that goes. And then the last book I want to get to is Mogul by Joanna Shoup. This is the third and final book in her Knickerbocker Club series and it's actually the last book that I need to read from Joanna Shoup to be caught up on her entire backlist. So I'm excited to get to that one. I have enjoyed the entire series. They are Gilded Age New York, very much like the Gilded Age show on HBO, which is also a great show to check out if you haven't. So I'm excited to get to that one. So those are all the books on my TBR for the readathon. I can't wait to get to them all. I can't wait to see all the posts on Instagram. It's always a fun time, fun like weekend to see everybody's posts, all the love for historical romances. And of course the hosts always do an amazing job as well of having it all organized and doing a live show and being super interactive. So I'm excited for this weekend and I will be checking in later to catch up on some of the reads I've read. 
So the first book I picked up is Rebellion by Dora Roberts. This I think I mentioned is the historical Hellions book club pick which is put on from Jess from Peace Love Books and Samantha from Books with Samantha. This is their October pick. And I actually ended up reading this one really fast. I think it's just under 300 pages and I had a great time with it. I actually really enjoyed it. So I ended up giving this one four stars and it was a great time. I thought it blended the romance with the action really well. So in this the heroine is Scottish and her name is Serena McGregor and when she was super young in the prologue she actually ends up seeing her mom getting attacked by English soldiers and so she has always hated the English ever since. This book takes place in 1745 so it is right around the time of the whole Jacobite rebellion and the Battle of Culloden gearing up so it does deal with that rebellion obviously rebellion as well. So Serena ends up meeting Brigham which is her brother's best friend and he's also a Englishman. When her brother and Brigham actually get into some trouble and need some help they show up at Serena and her family's home and they actually both need to be like bandaged up and taken care of and Serena's mom forces her to help Brigham because Serena was not trying to help him and she has to help tend to his wounds and Brigham is instantly taken by her and she is definitely the more standoffish one. So this one like I was mentioning I thought it blended the romance with the whole rebellion and action situation going on there really well. It actually really reminded me of Outlander because kind of that whole you know Jacobite rebellion situation going on and of course the Battle of Culloden which you know I wasn't mad about. I really enjoyed that. I thought Nora Roberts provided a lot of the history really well on the whole situation and I was really impressed with her writing as well. It just made me fly through the story. There was actually some steam as well in the romance which I was wondering if she provides steam or not. I didn't even know what to expect going in but there definitely were steamy scenes they weren't like super descriptive but they also weren't like fade to black or glossed over either so that was nice but since he's English and an earl you know she's not trying to marry an Englishman she's not trying to be an aristocrat's wife so she kind of has to deal with that battle as well within herself and I thought her family in here was really great as well. I always love seeing like a good family representation in historical romances and so it was nice to see you know Serena with her brother and her mother and kind of her father and just you know her entire family was just really great. She had great conversations in here with her mother and this book is actually set in the McGregor family series which apparently the other books in the series I want to say they're all contemporaries so this was like a flashback kind of you know meet the McGregor family roots which you know historical romance I loved it. So if there were more historical romances in the series I would definitely continue on. Now I'm not so afraid to pick up a Nora Roberts book because I know kind of what her writing is like. Yeah, four stars for this one and a great start to the readathon. And I've also already started The Yours Until Dawn by Teresa Medeiros. I'm actually like this much in, so I think like 30% in or so already. This one, it reads really fast. Like I was mentioning, it has that Beauty and the Beast trope, which of course I love. I know this is actually one of Teresa Medeiros' most beloved books and I can definitely see why. It just pulls you in right from the start. So in this one the hero is an earl and he joined the royal navy and when he came back he was physically scarred like he has a scar across his entire face as well as he came back blinded as well and so now he is just that kind of the beast of the Beauty and the Beast. So he is grumpy, he's scarred, he just thrashes about his estate, he you know makes his servants run away from him because they're in fear. Like just that typical broody grumpy thrashing about type of beast hero. And then the heroine she actually ends up coming to work for him. She gets hired on as his new like nurse or caretaker and so it is her dealing with him so far. I love the heroine because she doesn't take any of his crap. She'll like stand up to him, tells him off. Like he talks about how he's gotten multiple other nurses fired or they left in the past and she's like yeah you're not gonna make me leave like I'm dealing with your crap telling you what's up like we're not gonna do this so it's really fun so far I think Teresa Medeiros does really great banter and wit I just she just does really like smart writing and I really enjoy it but I'll probably be ending my night here and I will catch up tomorrow with another update on this book and then whatever else I end up picking up so I ended up finishing this morning Yours Until Dawn by Teresa Medeiros I gave this five stars it's now one of my all-time favorite Beauty and the Beast retellings I really loved and enjoyed this one I love the just like sweeping romance that was in here between the hero and the heroine. I don't really recommend looking up too much about this book before going in. Like I mentioned it is Beauty and the Beast retelling but just being swept up in the story and the romance I think is the best way to do it. We get some great caretaking scenes in here. We of course get the meddling servants as well which I loved that and there's even like a little side romance going on there. And yeah I just thought this was really great. I really love Teresa Medeiros' writing. I think I mentioned in the previous clip how she just blends her humor and like really smart witty writing really well and just the banter and the interactions with the hero and the heroine. The heroine just never took any crap from the hero and stood up to him. She kind of teaches him or helps him in learning how to be blind and kind of how to be independent. She even gives him a little puppy to kind of be his like assistant or little like service dog which was fun to see. This book really wanted me to dive more into historical romances which I mean good thing I'm doing the readathon so I'm going to be reading those all weekend but it just reminded me that how much I love historical romances and getting swept away and lost in them. The romances are just like 
a different level I feel like than I get in contemporary romances and so I definitely want to dive back into my historical romance binge situation <laughs> because for the summer which is actually you know I started my channel in May and so over the summer I have been reading more like getting back to contemporary romances and dark and like indie romances instead which I've been having a great time with those but lately like I do have a lot less five star reads I noticed than I do if I read historical romances so I used to read tons of historical romances which I still do I still read like a couple or a few um, every month but definitely not as much as I used to like my monthly wrap-ups used to be just like stacked with historical romances and so I definitely want to get back to them. This book had me realizing how much I love historical romances and getting swept away in them. I feel like the romances just work a lot better for me and so I just want to yeah get back to those. There's still tons of like indie and contemporary and dark romances I need to get to and binge as well and like they're not all bad. I definitely have five star reads in there but I noticed lately I've been having more like three and four star reads like they're fine they're whatever but like when this hit and it was five stars I was like yes this is what I'm missing and this is what I want to get back to. Too. So that's just a little side story, a little update about my reading experiences. <laughs> and yeah, so we'll get back to the rest of the readathon books. Next up today, I started and finished Jewel, which I really enjoyed. Gave this one four stars. Definitely one I feel like is an underrated Beverly Jenkins read. I definitely don't see a lot of people talking about this book. And so yeah, I really enjoyed it. This one, the heroine's name is Jewel. And then her friend slash also her stepbrother, because their parents just recently married like six years ago, he is the hero. And so his name is Eli. And he is really excited because this investor is from New York is going to be coming to town and trying to help Eli get the newspaper up and running again in their town. When the investor shows up, he tells Eli like, yeah, everything's going great and I can't wait to have dinner tonight with you and your wife. And Eli is like, um, excuse me? And he's like, well, yeah, like I don't deal with like single men. I don't deal with bachelors. Like I'm not into that lifestyle. Like I like family men. And so you and your wife can join me for dinner. And Eli's like, yeah, sure. Like, yeah, my wife will be there too, even though he has no wife. And so he runs to Jewel and is like, hey, I need your help. And like, need you to pose as like my fake wife tonight, just this dinner, like it will all go fine the investor guy is gonna leave tomorrow like nobody will have to know it'll be fine and so she decides to go along with it of course at one point in the dinner the investor ends up getting up at the table and gives this like whole speech in front of some of the townspeople like talking about how you know Eli and Jewel they're such a great couple and like he's so glad they're married and like that he's gonna work with them and so Jewel and Eli kind of freak out because they're like oh god like nobody was supposed to know this like fake situation going on of course the next day like townspeople are starting to find out there's like the local gossip woman who is spreading the news she's also like spreading a rumor that Jewel is pregnant and so Eli and Jewel's dad and the rest of their family is like Jewel like you need to do something like this isn't cool you know your reputation is going to be ruined and so Eli actually steps in and is like hey I want to propose to you like let's actually get married for real to save your reputation all the while he's wanting the marriage to be real between them and Jewel is more like yeah this is a marriage of convenience and like eventually we'll get a divorce like I can do this it's fine this one was really fun to see because they kind of have that history and that whole friends and lovers situation as well and the hero again is the one who falls head first first and then Jewel is the one who's like you know no like there can't be real feelings here like this is just a marriage of convenience like we'll eventually get divorced like it's fine <laughs> so yeah I really enjoyed seeing these two together and I gave it four stars next I started Wild Sweet Love by Beverly Jenkins as well and I'm about halfway through I'm on chapter nine which is actually halfway through the book and this one I'm loving so the heroine is Teresa July and her brother Neil July he actually had a book as well which was something like love because if you didn't know all but one of Beverly Jenkins historical romance connect or you know exist in the same world so we see a lot of the familiar characters over and over again so anyways in this one the July family are kind of like notorious train robbers and so Teresa actually worked with her brother or brothers as well doing train robbing and just kind of being an outlaw as well and so the story starts off with her deciding she wants to quit and she is like you know I'm gonna get out of that life and right when she decides that of course is when she actually ends up getting arrested and put in prison for three years and this book takes place in the 1880s which I have found most of Beverly Jenkins books take place kind of in that era of history and so when Teresa gets out of prison she actually ends up going to this like woman like Mrs. Nance she has a house where she actually helps people like who've come out of prison try to get back on their feet and all of that so Teresa goes to live with with Mrs. Nance and then she ends up meeting Mrs. Nance's son which is the hero Madison and the hero is kind of wary of his mom like taking in these people you know and kind of helping them out from prison and so he's a little wary when he hears about Teresa and kind of knows the history of her being an outlaw and all of that but then when he meets her he like also can't keep his eyes off of her and it was fun seeing their kind of friendship form they do like a lot of outings and spend time together which was fun to see we've also been seeing Mrs. Nance kind of teach Teresa ways to kind of be independent going forward you know teaching her like to sew 
show and be able to take care of herself and kind of manners and how to be a lady and things like that. And Teresa was like, I just need my jeans, my chaps, my gun, like give me some leathers, like I'm ready to go. <laughs> so it's fun seeing those interactions so far. The hero in this as well, he was actually a gambler, but now he has turned into a banker. And so he's kind of seen Teresa's more like outlaw-ish rebellious ways and it's kind of pulling him back to kind of some of the ways that he used to be instead of being more like straight laced you know like banker guy so it's fun to see their dynamic so far so that is my update for this i have some errands to run today so i will come back with my thoughts on this later And so it's later on on Friday and I had to go run errands today, take my daughter to a dental appointment. We got lunch and then, you know, we listened to the new Taylor Swift album that came out last night. And I did finish Wild Sweet Love by Beverly Jenkins. I ended up giving this one a four stars. I had a really great time with this. Just like the previous book I read, Jewel, this one I feel like is another underrated Beverly Jenkins read. And one I definitely don't see people talking about enough. And so I definitely recommend checking them out. I really love her backlist books so much. It's kind of more than I have some of her newer releases. And I started Before the Dawn by Beverly Jenkins. So far this one's really intriguing. The heroine ends up marrying like an older man at the beginning of the story who the older man was like in love with her mother and had always wanted to marry her but her mother never married him and so he's always kind of taken care of her treated her the heroine like the daughter that he never had he paid for her schooling and just you know he's been in her life forever so on his deathbed he wants to marry her to kind of help her out later in life you know once he's gone he wants to be able to provide for her and he found that the best way to do that would be to make her his widow because he's you know gonna be dying soon so she ends up marrying him to become his widow you know it's just a name only and then he ends up passing away but right before he does when he's also on his deathbed he tells her that he has two two grown sons living in Colorado that he left behind like 20 to 30 years ago. And he feels guilty about never getting back over there and seeing them and kind of, you know, being absent from their life. So he wants her, the heroine, to go and find them once he has passed away. But one of those sons ends up being the hero. And so when she finds him, she has to travel to the Colorado Rockies. And when she gets there, the hero definitely hates his dad because he abandoned him growing up. And then he kind of assumes the worst about the heroine as well. And is like, oh, you must be like a gold digger. Like you only married him for his money. But he's also like, like super intrigued by her and then he's kind of disgusted with himself because he's like this lady was like married to my dad she was with my dad like you know he doesn't know what their actual relationship is was like <laughs> I just love this purple cover it's so good so far I really like it I'm about halfway in or a little bit over halfway in so I will finish this up tonight this morning I actually ended up waking up early so I could buy the fairy loot special editions of the Crescent City series and so like I had to wake up at I think like 6 30 my time to be ready for the 7 a.m drop which was like in the UK it was like 4 p.m over there but anyway so that was worth it because I got that so but then I was awake for the day so I decided to start reading a Kindle book which I started reading Mogul by Joanna Shoup and so far this one's really good it is the third book in her Knickerbocker Club series which takes place in Gilded Age New York basically when the story starts the heroine it needs to go find the hero and she wants his help because her brother is missing and she needs to find him and then we find out that the hero and the heroine were actually married in the past so it's been like four years I think since they've seen one another he doesn't want anything to do with her and she's like dude like I seriously need your help like and then the hero he is a like successful newspaper owner and so she's like you have connections also this like note I got from Chinatown is referencing you as well like so I need your help so so far it's really good the heroine is hilarious and she like kidnaps the hero and shoots at him when he's trying to escape like she's just badass and amazing so we'll see how their story goes that's all I have for now it is almost dinner time my husband is coming home from work and he's bringing us Cadoba as well as some crumble cookies so that's all I have so far I've read four books so far for the readathon having a great time I have two more that I'm currently in the middle of so we might hit those nine books that I planned on getting to for the weekend but we'll see because Saturday I have a pretty busy day my mom and I are supposed to go to this like holiday craft bazaar thing that she wants to go to so we will see about that but yeah I will check in later
out Monday and I'm here to wrap up the historical romance readathon vlog. I think the last time I checked in, it was Friday and I was getting ready to hang out with my mom on Saturday. So we did end up hanging out, which right before this, you should have seen clips from that day. And so we hung out just all day. We went to like a local artisan artist craft holiday bazaar. And then we went to Michael's craft store and they had like Christmas and holiday decorations out. So we did that, looked around, and then we ended up going to Value Village, checking out the books. So I think I showed some historical romances there. I ended up picking up one, which was the alternate cover edition of Love Only Once by Joanna Lindsay. That was one I'd been looking for for a while. So I was super excited to find it there. And then after that, we just did dinner. And so I was just out all day. I didn't do any reading Saturday until I got home. Because then when I got home, you know, I hung out with my husband and daughter. And so I didn't get any reading started until late Saturday night, which I ended up finishing up Before the Dawn by Beverly Jenkins. I ended up giving that one three and a half slash rounded up to four stars on Goodreads. I really loved the whole premise and like setup of that one. Towards the end, some of the story and plot wasn't really my favorite of how kind of some of the drama was unfolding, but otherwise like a super solid Beverly Jenkins read. So I also ended up picking up the audio for Nobody's Duke by Scarlett Scott. This was actually on my TBR because Rachel from Rachel Rachel Reads and Sings. She read it during the last round of the Historical Romance Readathon, which was in the spring, and she loved that. Said it was like, again, The Magic by Lisa Kleypas, and I was like, sold. That's all I need to know. Like, I'm definitely going to be picking that one up. So I'm so glad I got to it. I ended up listening to the audio because it was on Hoopla, and it was such a good one. It is a second chance romance. It definitely had the, again, The Magic vibes, but like it brought its own story and plot as well, which I was excited to see it play out. And yeah, I loved it. I gave it five stars. It was a great time full of angst, like all the angst, which of course I love around here. So like bring me the angst and it delivered. This one, basically the heroine, she's actually a widow when the story starts. Her husband was assassinated in like a political assassination thing going on and now her life is being threatened. So the crowns, like the agents end up hiring someone as a bodyguard or like tasking them to protect her and her young son. And so her new bodyguard ends up being somebody that she loved in the past, like her first love. And ugh, the tension and the angst between them, it was so, so good. They had like a relationship eight years in the past. The hero was like the bastard son of a duke, never thought he was like worthy or good enough for the heroine. She was like the daughter of a duke, I want to say. And then she ends up marrying a duke as well later on. But oh my god, the angst was just like so good. It delivered. I already bought like a paperback copy because I need a copy of this book. I loved it so much. And I'm definitely excited to check out more from Scarlett Scott in the future. So Sunday was just like a hangout at home, chill day. I also ended up joining and watching the Historical Hellions Book Club live show with Jess from Peace Love Books and Samantha from Books with Samantha. So I watched that because they were talking about Rebellion by Nora Roberts. So that was fun to see everybody's thoughts on that. Also during the chat, somebody had mentioned how the cover that we all had, like the red with the tartan on it, was not actually the original cover of the Rebellion book. So I ended up during that live show while still watching their live show going on eBay and purchasing one of the original covers of that book just because I enjoyed it and that original cover like the harlequin cover is just so pretty which i'll show a picture of it here because of course it's not here yet for me to show and then later on that day it was the historical romance readathon wrap-up live show so with lacy and jess and lisa so that was fun to watch and chat with everybody about all their favorite reads i think like most people end up liking yours until dawn which was the group pick for the readathon so that was fun and then just seeing some other like historical romance wrecks and just talking about like you know, all the things was fun to do in the chat as well. So then I ended up finishing Mogul on Sunday night, which is by Joanna Shoup. That's the third book in her Knickerbocker Club series, which I feel like is one of her like underrated series that I don't see talked about enough. It's definitely like if you liked the HBO show Gilded Age, like it's definitely that same vibe, like New York, Gilded Age, Robber Barons, like all that same setup. So that one I ended up giving four stars. I really liked it. It is a second chance romance between the couple who were married in the past. That one is definitely like very fast paced action, lots happening. That one also brings up and talks about the Chinese Exclusion Act that was happening at the time. So that was an interesting little part of history included as well. I love the like history and tidbits. Joanna always does a really great job of adding into her books. So yeah, that was a good one. I gave it four stars and that was actually the last book I needed to read to be caught up on Joanna Shoup's entire backlist. So I'm excited for that. She's definitely one of my favorite authors. So yeah, it was a good readathon. I ended up having seven books finished out of the nine that I originally planned, which I'm totally fine with that. I knew the weekend was going to be busy. Everything I read was three and a half, four stars or up. I did have two five-star reads. So my favorites from the readathon was Yours Until Dawn by Teresa Medeiros and Nobody's Duke by Scarlett Scott. Loved both of those so much. Just the other two books I didn't get to, I'll definitely still get to them eventually. This readathon definitely 
it reminded me that I want to get back into like historical romances. I definitely have always read a few here and there every month but like I used to read so many of them every month and I definitely have been like switching more to contemporary and de dark like for the summer. It's definitely made me want to get back into historicals. There's like so many I added to my TBR during the readathon and I'm super excited to get to all of those. And over this weekend, I was super excited. My channel hit 1,000 subscribers, so I'm super excited for that and thankful for everybody who has tuned in, watched my videos, comments on them, because I love chatting with everybody in the comments who have subscribed, obviously, and stuck around and keep watching my videos. I really appreciate you all being here and chatting with me and recommending books and just, like, gushing about all the things. I'm super excited to hit that milestone. But yeah, it was just another great readathon. I do have full reviews up for all the books that I talk about in this video with all my, like, fuller thoughts on Goodreads, which of course is always linked in the description of this video. So if you participated in the readathon, let me know in the comments what your favorite book was that you read, or if you've read any of the ones that I talk about, let me know that too. Or if you're planning on picking them up, I'd love to know. If you haven't done so yet, make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my future videos, and I'll see you in my next one.